Welcome to Gardening with Lucy. I'm so glad you joined me today in my garden. And as you see, we're not in the vegetable garden today. We're in a different part of my garden because we're going to be talking about a different thing today, fall planting, which, as it turns out, is a very good idea for you to do in your garden here in Riverside. It turns out in Southern California and Riverside that the planting in the fall is the best time of the year to plant many perennials and shrubs and trees. And so I have someone here today, my friend Nan, who will help us learn more about why fall planting is such a good idea in Riverside. Nan is a friend and fellow master gardener. So Nan, tell us what you think about why fall planting is such a terrific idea in Riverside. Well, for one thing, it's very hot in the summer, and it's starting to heat up in the spring. And if we plant in the spring, the summer can sometimes scorch the plants. In the fall, things are cooling down, the soil is still warm, so the roots can work themselves into the soil easily without the tops being burnt or stressed by the sun. It's also more comfortable because we're in a cooler, time period so we're not so stressed while we're trying to put in a garden. In addition to that, the tops of the plants, because it's getting cooler and the days are getting shorter, don't grow quite as quickly but the roots continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So we have roots set themselves into the ground, the tops can kind of um, uh, just sort of um, stabilize and in the spring when the heat begins again, those roots are set deep in the ground, the tops can start filling out, and the plant is going to be much happier than if it were in the summer when it's starting to get scorched and the roots haven't really um, knitted into the soil. Wow, that sounds great. Now, what kind of plants would you suggest that we plant in this fall time? Well. You can do annuals anytime, so we won't talk about annuals, but we can talk about perennials, shrubs, and trees. Those are your primary um, uh, fall focus plants. Mm -hmm. So what about bare root trees? When's the best time oh, to plant them? Perfect in the fall. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, because they're going to settle in with their root systems just kind of sitting in the soil, starting to pull out or put out feeler roots, mm -hmm. and nothing is going to happen on top. It's a little harder to find bare root trees in the, in the fall, but if you do, you can put them in, stake wow. them well. What about roses? Roses, great. Yeah? Usually what you're going to find, though, in the fall in roses is your potted plants, mm -hmm. those in their five-gallon or three-gallon pots and they can go into the ground just like that. Bare root you usually find in December, January, February. Okay, so roses, fruits, fruit trees. Uh, what about shrubs? I know there's a, a lot of people would like to use drought tolerant plants. Is this a good time to plant drought tolerant plants? Perfect, because they're by nature starting to again send their roots out because they're used to expanding in the cooler season and then kind of hunkering down for the summertime and so as they continue or as they start getting a little bit more active in the fall again you're going to have a perfect root integration it's going to give you a really really strong plant in the spring okay and what about natives you know, native Natives, California plants. Best time. As a matter of fact, if you speak to people about native plants, they'll say even hold off and put them in in the fall. Now, I've put them in as a designer when we're doing gardens. Whenever we're doing them, we put in what we need to and uh -huh. we just make it work. But the best time is the fall for the natives. All right. So it turns out then, if we want to get the best start for our trees and shrubs and perennials, the fall is the best time to perfect. do that. In Riverside, perfect. Wow. So I'm hoping that everybody who hears this will take a little time this fall. You know, it's the time when we think about pumpkins and leaves falling off the trees and all these great things, but it's also a time to be out in the garden and actually planting some trees and shrubs and perennials. And you know what I like about it? is it's a lot cooler than the summertime. So for me, it's a great time to plant just because the weather is much milder. Um, so I suggest that people take this to heart 
and go out into their gardens and plant some plants in the Let me fall. ask you a question. Okay. Do you think people know the difference between an annual, a perennial, a shrub, and a, well, trees oh. are by nature yes. easy to identify. Okay, so what's the difference between an annual and perennial? The annual is a plant or a flower that you plant once a year. Say uh, pansies, snapdragons, uh, petunias, and you put them in and then when it gets really hot, they kind of just die out. They're gone, no more annual anymore. But perennials are flowers and plants that you put in and they grow and then they may go dormant, you may have to cut them way back, but the next spring, they're going to come back and give you some more plants, um, more uh, flowers. So they're more permanent. Definitely. Probably more, more permanent. economical. Well, definitely, um, if you don't want to have to keep replanting because of the cost, because of the effort, a perennial is a much better choice. Um, and you can go to your local nursery and find out all good kind of perennials. I like annuals because they're very showy. And you know, you go to the, the nursery or you go to like one of the box, big box stores and there's all these beautiful flowers and you, you just want to get a few in your garden. But I really, really appreciate what perennials can do coming back year after year. And your shrubs, they're something that gets woodier and usually larger. So they're a plant that's not really a tree. If it gets bigger than that, it's going to be a tree. But it gets a lot larger and it's got a woodier stem inside. So that would be the difference between these uh, herbaceous plants and the shrub. All right. So, Nan, do you have any resources that you can think of that people might want to use to help them learn more about planting their, veg uh, their uh, shrubs and perennials in the fall? Well, my favorite and one that we recommend and I recommend when I'm doing classes, when I'm speaking to clients, is the Western Municipal Water, or excuse me, the Western Gardening Guide from Sunset Magazine um, because it not only highlights the blooming time, the size and shape of a plant, but also it features details about best trimming time, planting time, as well as show time. For example, this lantana over here looks its best in the hottest time of the year, hot and dry, it's happy. As we get into the fall, it's going to start fading back again, but I'm still going to put it in now because again, by the spring, it's going to have such a established root base mm -hmm. that it's going to be that much happier when we get hot, even though it's gonna be a little more quiet and a little less obvious than let's say this. This is a flax, and the flax is gonna look like this spring, summer, fall, winter. And it's going to give me structure and it's going to give me color. This is another plant that I use in, well, I use it throughout the year but the value of this silver is that in the more, uh, the darker times of the year, like winter, fall, etc., cetera, um, you go out into a garden, the thing that's glowing is your white and your silver. And so this is Artemisia, Powys Castle. And it's one of those plants that don't bloom at all, but because of the silver, it gives you good contrast and it gives you light in the garden. So that's so another good one that's to plant right. in the fall. That's right. And then I'm looking at some plants near us. This over here is called Ramnus Californica or coffee berry. And coffee berry at this time of the year is giving us fantastic berries. If I were to plant this at this time, it's going to look like that in the ground. The berries will diminish. The birds love the berries and it's going to take off in the summertime. Now this is a California native, mm -hmm. especially happy being planted in the fall. This is an Australian native. This one's called Malaluca, and the flowers are beautiful. They're soft looking. This I can plant any time in the year, during the year, perfect for the fall. A little further over, we have a Mexican and South American native, and that is called uh, Mexican marigold, or Tejita slimonii. And that one is, if I put it in now, will be in full bloom during the winter. And so I've got some that are getting more quiet when I plant them, some that are becoming exuberant, and some that will just pretty well give me green and a nice structural plant throughout the winter and into the spring, and then be luxuriant in the later spring, summer, and fall. So 
planting in the fall doesn't necessarily adversely affect the plant so that it won't do anything. Mm, I'm glad you brought that up. There are some that we have to consider that with because planting in the fall brings us a little closer to winter and the dangers of winter, which are frost. In our area, because we have a Mediterranean climate, that means we have mild winters, that's when we get our rain. Occasionally we get frost, especially in the later winter. Some plants are particularly sensitive, their roots are, to frost, such as citrus. So citrus isn't your better bet for planting in the fall, okay. especially not later fall. Um, bougainvillea. Bougainvillea has a very sensitive root system. As a matter of fact, our bougainvillea in Riverside can freeze way back, but still come right back in the spring and the summer because its roots are strong, but if you put in a brand new plant and those roots have not knitted into the soil, you have a, a, a strong chance of losing it. That's what happened to us one winter. Yep. We had put a bougainvillea in like early fall and the frost came and the poor thing died. Yep. So we won't do that again. And some of the tropicals. tropicals. Some of the tropicals and, see now I'm, I'll, I'll add a few more to that, <laughs> and some of the succulents. Oh. If you're fearing, if you're in a frost area, um, you can put your succulents in, but some will look like frozen lettuce if you get a frost. Those roots still may be viable, so you don't take it out. You wait until the spring to see what happens. But those are the things we consider in fall planting, those more sensitive to frost plants. So some things you wouldn't plant but basic shrubs and trees. And perennials. And perennials. Put them in. Okay, good. Thank you so much, Nan. You're I've welcome. learned a lot today, and I hope that you have too. And I hope that you'll really think about this fall, making sure that you get some plants in the ground so that your plants will have a better start on their life in your garden. Thank you for joining me and Nan today and with Gardening with Lucy. And we hope that you'll be watching soon for another adventure in the garden.